writing yes i guess it is not a cup of tea for everyone how many of you like writing oh jeevan good uh yes wow very nice i could see everyone raising uh, i mean like writing that's really beautiful so basically writing occasionally isha okay no i don't akriti don't write <laughs> Thing. Now, you know, like uh, maybe after this class, you people start uh, loving to write, you know. Okay, uh, Swaptika, so don't like it is difficult uh, for me. No, no, no. Now I'll make the things more easy for you guys. So writing, you will all start loving to write. That means now uh, you, uh, anything you want to write it. So that is the kind of thing I'm going to present to you guys because... Uh, yes, we'll be approaching writing in a very nice, beautiful and appropriate manner. Okay. And also I'll be telling how you people can uh, be a 360 degree thinker here. Why? Because when we are writing, when we are speaking, the important feature that we need to have is what the ideas. Most of the times what happens when we are not speaking, when we are not writing, we'll have abundance of ideas about that particular thing. But when we ask immediate question, when we give the question for you people to write, so what happens? We may end up not having the ideas. Since we'll not have the ideas, what happens? We feel like we don't like to speak and we don't like to write. This is one of the main factor why, uh, like most of us don't like to write and speak. Why? Because we are short of ideas. We feel what to write, what is there in this topic. No, guys, I'll say we can write about simple. This pen, if we take, so this digital pen, we can write uh, like pages together on this without repetition. But how? Yes, I'm going to narrate all of these things today in the class. And also we'll be doing the first part of our IELTS writing. Okay, so now I want you people to, what is that, uh, simultaneously be active, like how you people are active on your listening as well as on your reading. I want you to have the same uh, activeness because you need to start utilizing, noting down the points, noting down, like when I say write the introduction, you people need to write the introduction when i say let us do the idea framing you need to do it by yourself okay so that kind of uh this will uh, proactiveness required in the class okay uh right any doubts any queries you people can keep it to the last because you know that i'll be answering all your queries in the last because if you uh, start asking the questions in between i may miss on answering your questions because i'll be focused on uh, training you people on this uh, thing. Okay, so once I end the lesson, so you people please ask me the question. Till that time, please hold on with your questions. Okay. So now I'm going to share the screen. Uh, here we go. Yes. Guys, can you guys see the screen? Yes, I guess you people can see the screen. Okay, yes. Now, I'm going to present the uh, this one. See, writing, yeah, how writing, what we have, we basically, writing goes on for 60 minutes. Okay, so how many minutes will be having the writing for? 60 minutes will be having. That is, in terms of hours, it is one hour. Most of you would be knowing. But this underwriting will be having two tasks. Okay. So task one and task two. What is this task one? It is termed as report writing. Okay. I'll tell what it is. Whereas what is this task two? It is termed as issue based essay writing okay now that means what we have report writing we have issue based essay writing here okay this report writing will be for uh this one how many minutes 20 
minutes and issue based essay writing will be for 40 minutes that means we have the timeline and i prefer you people to stick on to this timeline it's not that okay i'll be taking 40 minutes for my report writing and 20 minutes because the scores also vary here okay now your report writing you need to just present 150 words whereas issue based essay writing <laughs> 250 words okay so 150 words for this and 250 words for this that is the reason you can see the time limit also right hmm? don't cross more than 180 words okay and here also don't cross more than 2 280 words why because uh, you will not have any extra score or nothing it is just a waste of time but oh, you will be contributing to more of the mistakes why because if uh, in this extra 30, uh, this one above uh, 180 and 280 if you commit extra mistakes mistakes will be counted but extra points will not be counted remember that that's the reason it's always better to be wise and we can stick on to the given limitations here okay so this is the basic information about our tasks okay now let me tell on the scorings now what do you think how do you they, uh, how they calculate the scores see in reading and listening what happened so we know that if answers are correct then we are going to get one point isn't it so that means on 40 questions you need to see like how many are getting correct and on the base of your correctness you were getting the uh so this one bands but on writing how you will be doing on writing how they give the scoring see you may be thinking why do we need all these things about the scores and all it's only like we learn to write and we just go and write no only when you know how they are scored you will be doing better otherwise what happens so you may think that oh only on the question answer they will be asking us so if we just give the information whatever they have asked so we may get no so we it is not just based on uh what information you are giving there so even the way you present also is important right the grammar part is also present important so the words you are using is also important so and how neat you are presenting your ideas how crystal clear your ideas are so that is also very important that means what they have to check on certain parameters right so hence so on what your scores will be checked individually on writing would be so the first one is your task achievement guys remember task achievement it is important that you need to stick on to the task you should not wander off the task you should not uh, may uh, what is that if you not answer the question properly then you will be losing the score on this parameter why the task achievement itself is tested on the band of nine year getting it the task achievement is tested on the band of nine and so if you miss on the task so your score will be lessened here but task achievement is the area where you can get complete nine why because you need to understand the question and you need to just make sure that you address that question isn't it so task achievement is one of the things then coherence and cohesion very important this is also tested on the band of nine coherence and cohesion what do you mean by coherence and cohesion for example you people have a nice living room a very big living room you have so to add on beauty, beauty to that living room, I'll give you nice, very beautiful, authentic, aesthetic, uh, this one, what is that? Show pieces, figurines, show figurines. So I'll be giving you around 30 figurines, nice, big, and uh, very, uh, what is that? Classic one I'll be giving. If you people arrange it however you want, or if you just stuff them uh, like that only, 
do you think your room or your living room will have beauty there or if you accordingly put them according to some theme some arrangement so if you choose certain places where what figurine should go so if you choose like that and if you properly arrange it whether that gives the beauty to the room or whether just placing them anywhere and everywhere will give the beauty to the room what will give the beauty that neat arrangement isn't it the nice arrangement you need to put them where like where which spot is uh, which uh, spot will be suitable for what showpiece so if you choose like that and if you give it so then the look will be different isn't it we are using the same figurines but the the way you are arranging it is making the space beautiful there isn't it so in the same way you may have n number of ideas to describe your task achievement but if the ideas are not properly placed if they are not properly put in the right order in the right arrangement what will happen the beauty of your that means the essence of your uh, ideas will not give the thing that you are intending to give that means that may give some kind of awkwardness in your writing that means one may not be pleased even when you read yourself that pleasing will not happen so that is the reason so it is made sure that so coherence and cohesion should be maintained what is this coherence and cohesion means we will be writing multiple body paragraphs when you are making the multiple body paragraph make sure that in each paragraph one idea should be discussed completely and it should be concluded in that particular paragraph only you cannot take further this particular idea and discuss again in multiple multiple paragraphs or don't try to discuss multiple things in one paragraph okay so you need to have that designated paragraph to make the things clear crystal clear i would like to use the word crystal clear here why because that that gives the uh, that professional look for you writing uh, yeah i have a technique for this also how to maintain this coherence and cohesion we'll be using i double e c method which i'll be narrating it later when i construct the body paragraph so this is also tested on the band of 9 okay then comes advanced grammar skills yes guys very very important don't think that yeah whatever the writing skill that you people have is the best one and you can go with that no i'll be telling you i'll be pointing out 15 advanced grammar skills which you need to be perfect at what is this why am i using the word advanced grammar why i'm not using the word basic grammar because basic grammar many of you may be good at basic grammar what is this basic grammar basic grammar is nothing but the content the general content of the english language okay but how these things how these components to be used in a sentence is learned under advanced grammar skills under advanced grammar skills we have 15 parameters which makes the sentence error free okay makes the sentence what error free and those things you need to frame that means we will be looking at every sentence it is not overall like in colleges and schools you may see that each one of you or many students who are not that good in english also would be getting 98 97 so in their uh, this one why teachers just see the content what is there and they just give randomly the marks the ad, the grammar skills are not seen there so how the sentences are placed how the ideas are viewed in the sentence is not checked there 
that means we have been all these days misguided by our marks okay so but in the main exam in IELTS exam you can see that most of them suffer in writing the and in fact so after giving exam also they come and say that yeah my writing part has not uh, come out well so why because they would have not realized all these things and they would have not considered all these parameters while preparing but i want you people so uh, to work on all these four parameters uh, students why because if either one of them miss your score will be downing okay now that is also tested on the band of nine now the lexical resources what is this lexical resources why i am not using the word vocabularies here definitely i when when i come across when i encounter students say ma'am we are working on vocabularies we are working daily working on the words and all see only when you work on the words vocabularies what what do we do we read the word we read the word meaning that's it we try to what is that uh, utilize the word according to its word meaning in our sentences we don't further work on it actually uh, that's the reason i'm really against this vocabulary learning i always say that i don't want you people to just learn the words or uh, just what is that uh, 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 know the meaning of the word i want you people to know the contextual usage of the word when you know the contextual usage you will be using the word in the right part otherwise what happens you end up the words uh, placing them in anywhere and everywhere okay so that's the reason like i want you people to use so you need to work on the words according to the contextual usage that means you need to take up a word understand the different synonyms understand where which word is used and even try to locate the exact opposites because you cannot just use the negative words to give the negative uh, opposite form of the given word there so you need to know the exact opposites there and also opposite synonyms you need to know and along with that not only these word knowledge but i also recommend you people to work on idioms phrases collocations transition words all these things i want you to use here why because these are the things that beautifies all of these things that means the real makeup makeup i can use the word makeup the makeup is done by lexical resources so i want you people to use all of these things idioms are like okay it's just a piece of cake you would have seen whenever i speak so i try to use lot many idioms and etc why because i want to beautify my speech there or even my writing there yes i want you people to use this if you want to go above six your score you need to use all of these things if you have all of these things but if you don't have these things definitely i don't uh, think you will be going about six so if you want to have about six on your writing definitely idioms phrases so collocations so all these things we need to require so idioms as i said so it is like um i'm over the moon today because today it's writing class and i'm very passionate about passionate about writing phrases so the phrases so is nothing but so everything that glitters is not gold okay so spread your uh, this one don't put all your eggs in one basket so all these phrases and also we have in the class is also a phrase okay you need to use a right phrases collocations for example fast food is a right collocation what is this collocation means 
basically they are the combination of the words which has to be used in the right way you cannot just randomly use any combination of the words now fast food is there if i say see uh, these days now i really don't prefer to have fast food this is my sentence but instead of fast food if i start saying uh, these days now i don't like to have quick food because fast synonymous quick isn't it so and fast uh, coherence and cohesion i'll be telling when i do the uh, paragraphs i'll be telling how to uh, achieve this coherence and cohesion okay so now quick food do you think you people only will laugh what's wrong with ma'am why is she saying that quick food because you have not heard this combination our native speakers our english speakers will not use these combinations isn't it so uh that is the basic thing that we have and also we say academic results i'm giving the examples for collocations academic results that's the right thing but if you say that my educational results was not good they will tell what is that educational results we can say educational institutions academic results fine that means we have certain combination of words which you need to use in the same word in the same way in the same way the transition words the uh, the change of the tone in your sentences that means the real movement in the sentence will happen through this transition words like although when you are using although you are using two tone sentences although positive comma negative sentence although advantage comma disadvantage and then however whenever you are using however this side if it is positive then this side it will be negative and if it is negative this side you will be saying this side positive okay so like this these are transition words that actually give the uh, differences in the sentences that means when we combine because we need to use compound and complex sentences right so when we use the compound and complex sentences we need to uh, combine more than two ideas so when we are combining different ideas we need to use the transition words guys about coherence and all i'll be telling when i start with the essays okay so here i'm just trying to tell how the scoring is happening so this lexical resources again on nine band it is that means what how your uh, this one scoring will happen your scoring will happen while is also a transition word while because but all these are transition words we have 250 transition words in english language so now the scoring tends to be what like this so uh, on your uh, task achievement nine band on your uh, this one what is that coherence and cohesion nine band on your advanced grammar skills nine band and on your this one they are also called as connectors yes transition words we also call it as connectors and then so we have what is that Tra lexical resources nine they take the average say you people get complete score 999 so ultimately how much you will get 36 by 4 that is 9 that means see this type of uh, scoring is a very good thing why it is a very good thing you, they are not focusing on one particular thing and they are just giving the score they are focusing on all the four things therefore on all the four things you will be uh, they will be taking the score even if you are uh, not very good at something that will not drastically affect your score there but one drawback is what you need to be good at all the four parameters theek hai so that is the thing we have now whether the scoring on report writing and your issue based essay writing will be same or what no this is tested on the band of 9 like this only this is also tested on the band of 9 they will be testing 
here what will be having they will score take 30 percent of the score and here they will be taking 70 percent of the score 70 percent of the score here okay so uh just give me one second guys yeah so 30 percent and 70 percent we basically have here okay so 30 percent of the score will be on report writing they will extract so and on issue based essay writing so 30 uh, 70 percent will be taken karthik later so now here what happens so you will be seeing that. So here you may get around 30% is 2.6 around. And here this will be around how much? 7 point. Oh, sorry. 6 point. Uh, so for uh, something you will be getting. When you add up, it will come up to 9 band. Okay. So this is the thing basically we have here. So this is what we basically, the scoring will be. That is 30% will be from report writing and 70% will be from your issue-based essay writing. Okay, so this is the thing we basically have here, scoring part. Is that clear, guys? They, they won't be taking equal average here. They will be taking 30 is to 70%, 3 is to 7%. Yes. Now, See, why this scoring anatomy I'm giving is we need to work wisely. We need to get brilliant scores on our writing, on our speaking. So therefore, to get that, you need to know this anatomy. Otherwise, just randomly we are doing, randomly doing, definitely that will not help us to understand what score we'll be getting there we may end up getting low score in spite of hard work okay so that's the reason let us be very wiseful when we are preparing ourselves for such exams okay so now let me tell you let me show you what kind of uh, task that you will be getting here you can see here this is the report writing based on report writing in the sense what now let me talk about report writing so i'll show what is this report writing and what is this issue based essay writing like this you will be having what pictorial presentation on this pictorial presentation you need to present your report that means they will give you some chart or uh, uh, some uh, pie gra pie chart or some uh, this one line graph or uh, something column graph or bar graph or stake diagram so you may get anything process diagram you may get you may get a flow chart you may get any pictorial uh, uh, presentations you will be getting this pictorial presentation you need to describe and mostly these pictorial presentations will be what numerical in nature why because they will be the statistical information now what do we do when this diagram is given so these pictorial what we do we try to present the statistics everywhere oh this raised from this to this this raised from that to that so we just use the numbers and we'll be just doing that be aware you're not supposed to use the numbers here why it is the English language exam. When it is an English language exam, so what they are wanting to see, whether they want to see like, okay, from what to what it is increasing, what to what it is decreasing. No, they need you to explain this. So like how we are explaining. We explain it. Okay, there is an increase when compared to this year, when compared to that year. We don't use the numbers when we are explaining something. We try to explain that, okay? So that explanation we need. I'm going to show how to do that. So here, this is what your writing task will be. Let me show your writing task too. They will be asking, I, as I said, it will be issue-based essay writing. It will be, uh, yeah. So here you can see these are like, what is that debate questions? 
most of you would be knowing about debates right they will be giving you a certain uh, statement on the basis of that you people need to take up the stand okay so whether it could be advantages disadvantages agreement disagreement discussing the both the views and giving your opinion double questions causes and problems like this i'll just show the question okay this is your second type of task you can see here see right now i'm just giving you the glimpse because today i'll be focusing on writing task 1 you can see this is the type of question it will be more or less like our debate based questions okay so now let me what is that get back to our uh, writing sheet yeah now my focus will be on the academic writing task 1 you people see here uh, like what is that these are the kind of i we have collected few writings here to show you like how our writings will be can you see here this is one type of graph this graph we call it as a staked line graph why staked line graph task achievement coherence and sai ga ga grammar is yeah it is applicable for both the task it is not just applicable for only writing task 2 that is the reason generally i have said what are the things you people need to work on so when it comes to your uh, this one writing task it is very much applicable for both the tasks okay don't think that oh this is writing task for report writing they won't be checking here also i'll say what is task achievement how you need to present coherence and cohesion i will be showing that okay so now ha huh. you can see here i'll just take you down through the thing i i just want to show what are the different types of graphs you will be getting we are not limited to one type of graph let me make it little small so that you people will get to know you can see i'll make it little more small hmm. this is how the graphs you can see all the column graph table so uh, then uh, this one tables this is the flow chart we have and then we have multiple graphs in them so and this is also a flow chart kind of thing you can see here so we have all these are extracted from the previous papers this is a line graph you can see tables and you know process this is a process you can see as i said any pictorial presentation you will be having okay see pie chart we have you can see here uh, getting it sign chart so we have collected so the uh, yeah i want to show you see look at the map this is the map yeah definitely we'll be sharing it in the telegram okay we'll be sharing it so now you can see this one so this is a map here okay so map is there now like this guys so this is what we have okay we have uh, put everything here so in the sense like so that you you should not uh, feel that okay we have missed out on something no we have all the types of writings that we have now let me come to the report writing uh they will be uh, sai uh, they will be giving the link so for the telegram you people can join through that okay now let me tell you how to write the task one see you saw fully some of the do's and don'ts about the task one i want you people to concentrate on this and make it a, what is that a pointers that you will not uh, what is that uh, oversee these guidelines first and foremost no numbers now you may wonder ma'am it is all about numbers how can we say that we don't want to use the numbers no numbers guys bilkul no numbers structure yeah 
the look of your writing should be like this only. Four paragraphs it should be. How many graph? Four paragraph. I'm talking for writing task one. Remember, this is for writing task one. I don't want you people to have any kind of confusion. This is for writing task one only. Okay? Four paragraph uh, report writing you need to have. See, the range of thing is worth should be 150 to 180. And then, yeah, in this structure, the first paragraph should be introduction. First paragraph, what is that? Introduction. And it should have only two sentences. Remember, be careful. It should have only two sentences, no more than two sentences. I will be telling what are those two sentences, and today we'll be practicing introduction. Now, second and third body paragraphs. Now, when you're talking about in the first paragraph, you will be talking about some idea, try to collect from the graph all the similar ideas and discuss on that parameter here. Body paragraph two will be having another set of ideas, all similar ideas you will be discussing and you will be ending up. That means whatever you are discussing in body paragraph one, you are not supposed to get it back to body paragraph two. Whatever you are discussing in body paragraph two, you should not go back with the body paragraph. That means these two should be completely different. Ultimately, what we need to have? Conclusion. No conclusion here. No conclusion. No inferences. It is what? We need to have final overview. Yeah, final overview. And remember that whatever the say, whatever you say in the introduction, that should not be repeated in body paragraph. Whatever the body paragraph one will have, that should not be repeated in body paragraph two. Whatever the final overview you give, that should not be anywhere. That means more or less, see, your two sentences you will write more or less four to five sentences you present in your body paragraph one. So four to five sentences, body paragraph two. This will be only one sentence. Totally how many? Maximum if you write also, you will be having around 13 sentences. That means your complete report should be only 13 sentences. And these 13 sentences should be different. Different ideas, okay? You cannot repeat them. Final overview means what? Okay, after completely analyzing what is that viewpoint, what is that different viewpoint you have got that you need to present. That is the final overview. Now, for example, after the completion of the four weeks class, you people will get to come to some conclusion, right? About the classes, how well it was put across to you guys, how we informate you. So all these things, you will get some kind of overview, final overview. That is the final overview. Okay. So now th this is what we need to do. So totally what? So this is the structure, introduction, body of the paragraph one. So body paragraph two and final overview. Now, let me concentrate on introduction today. Let me tell you how much introduction. Yeah, tell me, Akriti, what is the thing? Introduction is very, very, very important. Why introduction is important? It is the face of your essay. That means if anyone wants to read it further if you want to make people to read your introduction further or introduction overview body okay what is this akriti what did you say 
see it should be your thing introduction body paragraph 1 body paragraph 2 and final overview this is the structure okay four paragraph in four paragraph introduction body paragraph 1 body paragraph 2 and final overview got it now now i am coming to introduction remember the first part i am coming introduction okay so in introduction see kevin it uh, continuation no everything whatever has to be uh, like if you want to uh, describe a lot in the body paragraph one on the first idea please put it off in the body paragraph one don't carry anything from body paragraph one to body paragraph two that is why that is coherence here coherence and cohesion means you, if you are dedicating something you dedicate something in one particular paragraph don't mix the ideas if you are starting with a body paragraph two you need to make sure that you are presenting something else in the body paragraph two which is not said in body paragraph one okay right now introduction as i said we need only two sentences it is your face of the report writing that means if they by seeing introduction one can easily say how what uh, a kind of uh, this one report you have presented so make sure your introduction would be excellent okay so usually introduction the starting point only is a main problem isn't it most of you would have seen that ma'am how to start the uh, uh, this one report writing or starting our essay writing only is a big major issue this is what you feel right so only here i have a simple technique now you people follow this you blindly follow this i am using this word you blindly follow whatever we are teaching in the class you will see that your life becomes easy on writing what are these two sentences introduction only two sentences huh come out of that mindset oh fancy words fancy ideas uh, uh, narrating cock and bull stories all these things zero if you write all these things now, because in schools and colleges, that were the thing, those were the things were taught. What is that? You need to give a what is that uh, unclear image? That means what? Give some kind of cock and bull stories, cover stories, and then present the ideas. Don't present the direct ideas. Please avoid that. This is professional exam. We are not doing that. Nobody will have that much of time to look at our uh, cover stories and then uh, come to the point. No, we need to be very direct and it is a professional writing. So we need to have everything direct. So here, the first statement should describe what is the given question is. Describe the question presented. Think that the whoever is evaluating, yeah, describe it is rephrasing the question thing. So describe the question presented. That means what? Don't use the same words there. You need to paraphrase. That means you need to give us the idea. If I am an evaluator, you need to think that, oh, ma'am is not given with the question. It is my duty that I need to present the question to her. And even whatever the information you are giving, na, you need to think that you are presenting. I don't have anything there. No question is in front of me. So you are describing everything what is given in the same way that is presented. So you should not make stories, right? If you are describing something to someone, so what you need to see if you are helping some blind people. So what you will be doing? Will you add on or will you do uh, everything? No repetition, no examples. Uh, that's what I'm giving you example here. 
say when you are narrating uh, uh, this one some place to a blind person how do you narrate whether you will add on masalas and everything and you will uh, explain or you try to describe exactly the same thing exactly the same thing right how it is what is there where what it is yes e what exactly tara is nothing but if this is a pen if uh, i am blind if you are narrating this to me how do you narrate this it is a black cylindrical pen so it may be of 15 cm right it has a small tip and the front part is little conical right so that is what you will be narrating you won't say like okay this is like a, this one you won't put add on something and you won't say right and it is a plain black pen we have that is what exactly the same you need to introduce you need to present the things exactly the same you cannot change the ideas especially on your report writing nothing should be changed there no guesses no imaginations no assumptions in your report writing so the first sentence that we we are going to have will be the question description so because you need to think that the person who will be evaluating is not given the question if it is not given then it is your duty to present the question in the same very manner so that is given that means you need to use different words to present the same idea the second thing that we have here is what our initial overview initial overview means what as soon as you see at something you'll get that initial view for example so today's class writing class this is the initial class writing class as soon as you attend this you will get one kind of overview okay this is very descriptive it may go very in detail maybe all the four five classes what will be will be going very in depth and will be having a lot of practical thing and technical thing that means you also got an idea that yes writing task in ielts will be more technical this is the overview you will be getting or when you initially came for our listening class so you got an overview how the classes are conducted how efficient and what is happening that is the initial overview or as soon as you go somewhere that initial vibes that you get so that is the initial overview but as what is the final overview final is after you completely analyze after you attend completely the classes everything you will get that one final review that is your final overview right so now let us quickly take one example here and let us try to what is that do the introduction what is the question statement try to look at this the graphs this is the question statement we have okay the first statement what we need to do we need to give the question idea right so what you can do i have a trick for that also that narrating the question is nothing but you paraphrase this question idea okay what you do so you try to narrate what is that the question idea only you try to paraphrase okay so this is like how the question will be you will be having question idea you will be having instruction and then you will be having the figures here okay so the first statement what is that they have given the graphs below show the number of male and female workers so in 1975 and 1995 in several employment sectors of the republic of Tridonia. this is the thing they are saying okay so now i am presenting your first statement what is that paraphrasing the question statement but when you are paraphrasing you be more specific this is the line graphs this is staked line graphs why it is staked line graph because two two lines have been discussed in one thing that means two two ideas or two uh, data is presented on one single line so therefore what i can write 
I can use this. I'll give the phrases also, the starting phrases for introduction also. I'll be providing. So you can say the presented, the presented staked line graphs, line graphs compares why graphs because i have two graphs here isn't it so two line graphs i'm going to present the same thing the present is staked line graphs compare the number of men and women of Republic of Fredonia, Republic of Fredonia, working, working in different sectors, working in different sectors in the years in 1975 and 1995 respectively why i am using the word respectively because you can see see a uh, typing it will take a uh, time here i'll be using the fresh page okay so just for now i wanted to so show the spot here that's the reason like i am presenting this okay i'll be rereading because right uh, typing will take a lot of time we'll be wasting a lot of time here and that won't give that efficiency when explaining uh, yeah so the present is take line graphs compare the number of men and this is years years year though you can use year is not a number year is not a number okay so now these are numbers 200 400 600 800 thousand these are numbers okay years so we should use right the presented see if you are writing statistical data it is just a normal generalization we need to be specific that shows that that adds on to one vocabulary also right Staked line graphs. Be, be very, what is that uh, specific? Don't go on generalization. Why statistical information? Further, that statistical information. So last two decades, uh, see, when we are comparing which last two decades? That is also when we are describing, when we are narrating, we can use the decades in uh, in the, what is that? Uh, in two decades, the number of women working has increased. So like that, when we are explaining, we can use. But if you just in uh, different sectors, in last two decades, instead of this, if you write last two decades, which decades? Then it should be, what is that? 13 and 3. It refer to 2003 and yeah you can use illustrates presence describes depicts all these things i'll give you that list of words also for now i am showing you people how to write your this is the paraphrased question statement this is what the paraphrased question statement and is you and is important number is important don't use the symbols there number is important here also the number of okay it is not no it should be number of because i'm writing here i'm just presenting this this should be your first statement okay so now initially what i suggest you people to write the initial statement the second statement of the introduction i always suggest see something i is so ma'am can you uh yeah respectively because i need to say that this 1975 is talking about the first graph 1995 is talking about the 
second graph because the present is take line graph two things we have right if i don't write respectively the it may say that the second graph could be of 1975 and the first graph could be 1995 it won't be very clear to make the things very clear so we need to use uh, this thing okay now that is the thing this is see right now we are talking about introduction let's keep to introduction only body paragraph definitely i'll be telling it later because if i now talk about body paragraph you will be confused with what what to write in introduction okay so now this is the introductions first sentence should be something like this introduction second sentence will be what initial overview what is that initial overview you can see something higher something lower something very common like which is stable this is what initially highlight or something highlighted could be your this one so what is that in uh, this one 1975 you are seeing in every sector men is this one yeah so in every sector men strength only is more whereas in 1995 the trend is changed what is that you can see that in certain sectors female have exceeded men so this thing because we have not yet analyzed what we have do, doing we are just initially seeing and initially presenting so you can write so now i'm going to write the uh, this one what is that our uh, this one what is that Init uh, the initial overview how it is initial analysis or a glance at the graph the glance at the graph at the graph indicates indicates that in 1975 in 1975 the number of male employees employees exceeded exceeded female that of female employees 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 while while the trend changed in to next next two decades okay while the trend changed in next two decades as it was witnessed it was witnessed that that in few sectors in few sectors female workforce the strength of female the strength of female workforce work force exceeded exceeded that of male workforce see now this is our this one the glance at the graph indicates that in 1975 the number of male employees exceeded that of female employees while the trend changed in the next two decades why because 1975 to 1995 so it's two decades right 20 years as it was witnessed that in few sectors the strength of female workforce exceeded that of male workforce this is our initial overview now whatever i have given here this you will not be seeing in our body paragraph now let me repeat the introduction the first sentence which is your paraphrase questions 
will be like this. The present is staked line graphs compare the number of men and women of Republic of Fredonia working in different sectors in 1975 and 1995, respectively. Now, immediately followed by that, we have uh, your, this one. That means this is all introduction. The glance at the graph indicates that in 1975, the number of man, uh, sorry, male employees exceeded that of female employees, while the trend changed in next two decades as it was witnessed that in few sectors, the strength of female workforce exceeded that of, exceeded that of male workforce. Got it? Guys, now, did you guys get that? Yeah, we'll be doing more in detail tomorrow. More introductions we'll do. I'll ask you people to do more introductions in tomorrow class, and we'll discuss about the body paragraphs also. But this should be this way. The clarity should be there. OK, yeah, definitely we'll be sharing this thing for you on your uh, this one. What is that? Um, a telegram link okay so our moderator will be helping you out on your telegram link okay yeah so we'll be giving you this uh pdf okay what uh what uh thing uh, try to write more uh this one sai gauda yeah initial analysis could also be good yes the any initial analysis of the graph indicates you can use and tomorrow i'll show you a little bit of vocabularies i mean the lexical resources that you need to use to uh, use use uh, you can use for your uh, writing task one i'll be showing that also okay so but now whatever we discussed today was it clear for you guys Any doubts now, anyone? Oh, Vinayak, all the best, Vinayak. Don't be nervous. Yeah, but ma'am, uh, the statements you wrote after introduction, it, yeah, that is what initial overview, right? So, uh, describes the graph details. Can it be considered? Yeah, it is. What is that? It is not detailing. It is just one information. We have just given the initial overview. That's it. We are not describing anything, Saurabh. It is just a simple uh, intro. I mean, initial overview. Description. I'll show tomorrow how uh, detailed description it will be. This is what we want, uh, Saurabh. Uh, but ma'am, while practicing, how we'll check our pro, uh, uh, this one? Yeah, see, uh, basically you need to have, see, Isha, like when you, uh, at least for writing and speaking, you need to have someone, some professional who need to check your writings and speaking. Because reading and listening, yeah, your answers will tell you like where you're going wrong and etc. But in writing and uh, listening, definitely you need the professional help. An evaluator should be there, and also an ev evaluator should tell you why you are wrong and what is the right method. Okay. Uh, now, S is for totally okay, Drupti. Right, ma'am. Uh, the good words for yeah, yeah. So I'll be giving you the phrases. I said you right. So I'll be giving you the phrases and vocabulary skills, lexical resources. So, so tomorrow I'll be presenting that. Okay, because today I wanted to make things clear about your writing and some of the myths, whatever you people have. So I wanted to take them out and uh, yeah, introduction. I wanted to focus on today. Oh, fancy words, definitely you can use, but not the fancy ideas for uh, report writing. Never we need use the fancy ideas. We can describe very nicely, Lakshit. Aram say we can describe them in very less number. I said, no. Nah. So we, we, we need to have, what is that? Only 13 sentences. In 13 sentences, you will be writing brilliantly your uh, report writing. Because the more sentences you use, so you will be confused. You will be writing all unnecessary things. The repetitions will be there. 
so we we should not have any kind of repetitions okay yeah telegram link will be the, given uh, so and there in telegram we'll be sharing this word document okay you should ask our uh, this one moderators kajal right i hope uh, like everything is clear now for this class okay so okay then uh, so right uh, supriya over to you thank you students I had a great session thank you so much thank you ma'am okay Guys, you have any uh, 